Blending involves the mixing of two or more wines in certain proportions to produce a different wine, which should ultimately be better than the individual components. Though that does not necessarily mean blending a good wine with a poor one will produce a decent quality product. With an improvement in the overall quality and a clear end product and importantly price point in mind, blending can be undertaken for a number of different reasons. These include to produce a certain style of wine, to create complexity and complementarity between different varieties and or regional characteristics, to produce a consistent product that consumers come to expect from a certain label, or simply to balance components such as acid, flavour, tannin, colour and oak. Blending can be conducted at a number of stages, including just prior to bottling under the right circumstances, but individually stabilised wines are not necessarily stable once blended. Wines are therefore blended prior to undergoing stabilisation treatments and maturation, or stabilised and matured wines are blended and stored for several weeks to allow integration and monitor stability. Blending of different wines must fit within the constraints of regulations regarding labelling of vintage, variety and region. Trial blends are prepared with small volumes, then assessed by the winemaker to determine the ideal proportion of each wine to produce the desired end product. It is obviously much better to get the blending right on this scale before going into full production scale. So once maturation and stabilisation is complete and any decision to blend made and carried out, the next stage is bottling. The decision to bottle a wine should be made with the confidence that the process of putting the wine into a package will not materially affect the wine. There must also be a clear understanding that once bottled, there is little or nothing that can be done to change or adjust the wine if the bottle product is unsatisfactory. The preparation of wine for bottling will vary according to the wine type, style and the price point. The parameters that should be used in the preparation for bottling are based on the rules of sound winemaking. Sanitation and hygiene of wine bottling equipment is extremely important and for a number of wine styles, for example any wine containing residual sugar, the bottling must take place under what we term as sterile conditions. This means that the wine must first be filtered through a membrane prior to bottling. The goal here is to ensure that the wine is filled and sealed in a container absent of microorganisms that could potentially grow and therefore spoil the wine. Prior to bottling, a full analysis of the wine is undertaken of a large number of parameters such as pH, titratable acidity, dissolved carbon dioxide, dissolved oxygen, free and total sulphur dioxide, alcohol and volatile acidity, just to name a few. It is crucial that proper preparation is required prior to bottling, most significantly ensuring that any equipment that will make contact with the wine is sterilised before use, independent of whether the wine is destined for sterile or non-sterile bottling. There are various methods of filling wine bottles. They all use gravity as a principle, but have different characteristics. The most common are termed simple gravity, low vacuum or counter pressure fillers. Low vacuum is commonly used and is typically considered the best method for bottling steel wines, while counter pressure is required for sparkling wines, as this technology ensures that the carbon dioxide or all the bubbles in the wine are retained. Irrespective of the type of filler used, it is important to make certain that contact with oxygen through the filling process is avoided or at worst minimised. This can be done by sparging the empty bottles with inert gas such as carbon dioxide or nitrogen prior to filling or the direct addition of the gas to the neck of the bottle immediately prior to the addition of the closure. Still wines should ideally be filled at a temperature between 12 to 18 degrees centigrade. Above 18 degrees there is a risk of the wine being heat damaged or oxidised and below 12 degrees there is a risk of the wine expanding as it warms which can create undesirable pressure in the sealed bottle or cause difficulties in applying the wine label to the cold bottle. The shelf life and ageing ability of packaged wine will vary depending on the type of closure or stopper used. Cork has been traditionally the most widespread material used, but due to the problems associated with spoilage and inconsistency in cork, in Australia and New Zealand, premium winemakers have moved towards the use of screw cap closures, 
which are easy to use and reduce the risk of wine spoilage, such as cork taint or oxidation. There is a range of screw cap options in terms of printing and decorating these closures, and also controlling oxygen ingress rate through the cap. Along with this, the cork industry has responded in developing new technology to improve quality control in the production of natural and agglomerate cork to limit the problems associated with cork. While glass is still the major form of packaging used for wines, there are a number of other options. These alternatives are generally subject to a shorter shelf life than glass, so should be well researched and understood before a decision is made to package in these formats. Labelling of wine serves a dual purpose, both to communicate regulated information about the wine and to assist with promotion and branding. The regulated information on wine labels typically includes mandatory requirements, such as alcohol by percentage volume, wine volume in litres, country of origin, and a declaration of legal additives and processing aids used in the wine's production, such as the addition of sulphur dioxide, milk, or egg products and others. Other claims cannot be misleading or false, such as the origin, vintage or variety of wine contained or even the geographical origin. In some countries, there's also a requirement to provide a health warning regarding the consumption of alcohol containing beverages. Many Australian winemakers take the opportunity of labelling to enhance their wine brand and appeal by designing eye-catching or interesting labels that tell a story of the particular wine or winery and can use interesting or quirky names that appeal to a desired market demographic. In fact, wines can be purchased based purely on the way the consumer feels about the label. In the upcoming activity, we want you to share your favourite wine label by uploading a picture to the discussion board and telling us what makes it so great. Once the wine is bottled, additional changes can occur over an extended period of time leading to further changes in sensory characteristics and the development of complex flavours, aromas and mouthfeel. These reactions, which are slow to occur, may not be complete during the initial maturation phase in the winery, and it is only after sealing of bottles and the subsequent low oxygen conditions that lead to other chemical changes. Different closures in a glass bottle wine influence how a wine ages with slow ingress of oxygen through closures being a major determining factor. And using different closures for bottling of an identical wine leads to differences in the resulting wine. Storage conditions including temperature, light and even bottle position can play a role. Cool storage temperatures and bottles which prevent the passage of short wavelength light or dark cellars are usually the best options. The exact changes and whether they are positive or not depends on the packaging but also on the wine variety and its production. Some white or light body red wines may tend to lose their fruity qualities for no beneficial gain in complexity, while many red wines which are not so reliant on those primary attributes can improve through bottle aging.